Your health information, your rights. Whether your health information is stored on paper or electronically, you have the right to keep it private. First off, you have the right to see or get a copy of your medical records. Sometimes you might not be able to see certain parts of the full record, but you always have the right to ask. If you find a mistake in your record, you have the right to request to have it corrected. If you disagree with your doctor or health plan about certain information in your record, you have a right to submit a written statement of disagreement that will be kept with your record. You also have the right to know how your health information is used and shared. Now, your provider is allowed to share your information for certain reasons without asking you first, like when your doctors work together to determine how to best treat you when you're sick, or to report the flu when it's in your area. But in general, your providers can't give information to an employer, for example, without your permission. And if you'd like to know who has seen your health information, you have the right to get a report. That's called an accounting of disclosures. For example, you can tell your provider what phone number they should call to contact you and whether they can leave a message.
also are we doing kind as an organization we're doing kind um people to come and join us if you believe in our cause which is to advance um and provide education and training for um medical staff including nurses and doctors and we provide outreach so if you want to be a member of our organization just go into our website um, which is um right there down there and um then go add a member and then sign in and uh, you'll be able to join us and become part of our um, initiative so we can reach even more people everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so to do to COVID, um, we postponed our medical mission which was supposed to be this year in September, we postponed until next year, but we still encourage people to um, sign up if you're interested to come join us and come and find out what projects or what activities and possible dates as of now, September 12th to October 2nd of 2021. And all those um, applications will be uh, accepted and we'll be talking to you and see how you can come and bring your experts. You do not have to be a healthcare person to come and join us. So anybody is welcome to come and join us. And then we will really get what activities are first and we find a place that is able to come and join us to provide care and focus on our population. Our conference, our goal always is to try and reach over and try and improve um, quality of healthcare, which is one of our mission. And um, all the opinion of all the panelists who came in today and everybody who's going to share their um, expertise or experiences from their area, as they are all in pain, not, uh, they're all opinion, they're not representing their uh, uh, places of work. So just let's take it as that and discuss it and learn from each other and that uh, would be great. So to start the this conference today is based on the um, creating the culture of safety, meaning um, everybody is responsible for where you work to create a safe place for you to work. And our all healthcare workers, specifically nurses and doctors, are, are supposed to answer to our patients. So our patient is the biggest employer. And so all the care that we provide is supposed to go to make the um, environment safe for them. Also, because we, were, we work with them, so we are supposed to create that environment safer for us, also for all the healthcare workers to work. So if I um, provide something that is going to advance the cause of um, creating that safe environment for people who are uh, working in that area, then it's my responsibility also to do that. So it's a responsibility for human resources, the responsibility for the director, it's a responsibility for housekeeper, it's a responsibility all the people who are involved working in those healthcare settings. So if we all work together, we create a safe environment for us and also safe environment for our patients. So we all have um, the say in it. So how do we reach that? And so that's the reason that we're here today to try and provide best practice for different areas of the country or the world to make sure we are all working together to try and um, uh, create a safe environment. So at the end of the conference, I'm hoping all the other organizations, we hope, all the panelists are hoping that we will take some ideas or have some points that you go home and work, um, a place of work, create, uh, use those content that you learned today and be able to create a safe environment for our patients and also a safe environment for you to work on. Because we all chose to come to the healthcare areas because we want to help people. So if that's the desired goal for everybody else, so then we should create that environment by creating safety first and then by the care of uh, all these people who need that. And so before I start, I'm gonna um, try to find out um, if we have ideas of um, um, we're gonna discuss five areas. We're gonna discuss um, professionalism. We're going to discuss um, accountability. We're going to discuss um, communication. We're going to discuss team working. We're going to discuss competence. So, in those five minutes, before I encourage them uh, and invite the presenters to say, I'm going to ask and see um, how many people know what are these um, team members or if they've heard in any of this conversation. Does anybody see my screen? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yes. first question, can you please um, answer me? Yes. Only five 
kind of questions. Ah, okay. Uh, the first question is asking, uh, can you add about uh, professionalism or even more about this professionalism? Okay. And then um, the second question is asking, have you received any training about uh, accountability or do you even know what is accountability? The third question is asking the same thing about communication. If you have received any training, what about the teamwork? And then, um, uh, do you know, uh, have you received any training to, to create the culture of safety? So there are these answers that will help us, um, all the panelists, to try and um, provide those um, scenario based experiences so we can learn and be able to um, provide some insight or guidance for people who um, experience those situations so people can learn from our mistakes or they can learn from us, they can gain those uh, opportunities um, to go and improve their area of work. So once you finish it, can you just um, submit and then you can those results? Then the, um, I think someone is having a problem completing the, uh, the, the question here. I know some people are, are finishing it, but some of them don't have the option of uh, completing it. If you scroll down all the way to the end, you should have a bad system. So you basically are trying to continue. If you don't go by the way, you're not going to see that here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because yeah. mine is already shut. Okay, I'm sorry. So it, it's a for Mr. Solak. I think if you have the, he may be a, as a host. Is he a host? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. okay, because I think he's not getting the little, the little um, circles in order to complete the, uh, the survey. So did people submit the survey? Did anybody submit the survey? Yes. Yes, I think yes. about half or so. I think it depends with some some people are running this if they're running on your secret browser, may you may not be able to type the some questions to that right. What browser are you using? Mm -hmm. Charles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, no, this one. Yeah, I think I think he might be seeing the same thing that we're seeing, and that's the actual results. So I think that's why we can just continue on. I don't see any time. I see only people. Yes. I'm seeing the results right now. Mm. Yeah, there was about 10 earlier. This is like a second round. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to say that question is nowhere to write. Mm. What is professionalism? There is nowhere a option to write. That's why it gets completed. Those which are markets. I mean, mm. the yes and no. Mm. Okay, yeah, the yes and no is fine. You don't need to write anything. You don't need to write anything. So, what do you do? You just click on it, like you, you need to know what it is. Let go. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I have um, different numbers, but okay, that's why I'm just sharing the results. Okay, I had um, almost 67% of knows of this professionalism or accountability. I had. Um, only statement that still people are answering the person without. Um, and then, um, and then for competency was um, 81, people know what it is. And then for um, teamwork was only five knows what it is. So it's a good thing that people are here today so we can discuss those things and people will share their, um, their uh, insights about that. Um, to continue with that, um, so the poor sick of accounting. Um, to continue with that, um, once we know what it is, and then we, I'm hoping that you will take 
when you're in the air to go ahead and start practicing and study. So, as healthcare workers, as I say, we choose to go in this profession to go and help others. Yes. So, we create a safe environment for us, that means we create a safe environment for the patient. So, sometimes people say, oh, that does not include me as a healthcare worker, or oh, I can do whatever I want to do. But imagine if you are a patient and a nurse or a doctor is doing whatever you want to do, and then it doesn't create that safe environment for that person. So imagine as a patient. So I do have a video. If you see um, the question of creating cultural safety all for the patient standpoint, and then hopefully it is going to help us to be able to say, I don't want to be that this, I want to be that doctor. I need to do better for myself, and I need to do better for our patients. So I'm going to share this video with you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I can hear you. around their necks. And although everybody was rushing to enter 
there in the computers. Nobody stopped to tell me, the patient, what was going on. It was as if they assumed that I understood. It was as if they assumed that we were all on the same page. But let me tell you, we were not on the same page. I, the patient, was not on the same page. Nobody encouraged me to drink water, despite my dehydration. Nobody put a cool rag on my very hot forehead. Nobody offered to help me walk to the bathroom in spite of the fact that I was too weak to walk on my own. I believe that there's a basic difference in what doctors do and what nurses do. Doctors treat the illness or disease and nurses treat the human response to that illness. That means that the doctor can come in and change the drug dosage and go away and come back to see if it made a difference. But the human response, on the other hand, is there 24-7. That means that we nurses must be at the bedside to attend to that human response. And attention to the human condition means that we must be with our patients. We must talk to our patients. We must talk with our patients. We must look at our patients. We must touch our patients. Yes, we must touch our patients. We're called to care for our patients. And caring means trusting our patients enough to invite them to be part of the team. Always says, once a nurse, always a nurse. Her motto has always been, nurse's training is training for life. I am proud to be a nurse. I'm confident that real change can happen if we work together. Thank you.
specialize in uh, endocrinology and diabetes. Dr. Lava has a diploma in medical education, graduated from Trekia University of Bulgaria. His um, current role is consultant physician in diabetes and in endocrinologist, uh, uh, general internet medicine, helping hospitals um, around for in London. Current training program director for internal medicine uh, training board for Queen's Hospital and King George Hospital and current educator leader for acute medicine. Dr. Mao is one of the founder members of Tanzania UK Health Diaspora Association together and intern treasurer. Above all, Dr. Mao is a passionate about medicine, education as a um, he regards medical education as an important job and not a destination. He's also a regular panelist here at uh, QHCS conference. Uh, welcome, Dr. Thank you very much. So, uh, thank you for a kind of introduction. I'm a physician in Queen's Hospital, and I've been working in this hospital for the past five years now. And uh, today's meeting, I think, oh, uh, we could discuss about a few aspects of uh, patient care. With regard to um, teamwork, effective communication, and professionalism. But I think we, we, we are still the issue of professionalism, but in the criminal scenario. Um, we all know that most of the healthcare professionals might reach for the child patients, and therefore, in terms of our use of maternal professionalism, and of maintaining the patient for the child so we will give you an example of that. I said of the Y, of the X, who saw a patient in, in one of his wards, a patient who is 25 years old already, no one out of body, and uh, she's trying to keep up with drinking, but without support, sometimes when they have problems getting out of her leg, uh, withdraw seizures or just not to be very well. And then um, the patient was seen by the team, treated, and with that we hope that for years on team to see the patient and support them in the community. To make sure that if they try to keep up treat, you need support with that. But Dr. White, maybe you share that case in who are one of his WhatsApp group. And we know that any information shared in the WhatsApp group we believe is not, it's not without identification, it's not good for medical professional healthcare workers to share those special information on social media because things can be that set uh, post can be shared to a lot of groups. And the, major, the patient might come and see the post, which the same post um, had scripture or is scripture. And as a result of that, you reach patient confidentiality and the investment professional. So that's an example. When we talk about professionalism, we have to make sure that the patient trusts us and therefore, whatever information that you patient is confidential and they share with the healthcare professionals. Maybe it's for setting, unless you want to consent with the patient that can I share your information, maybe they don't, or one of the teaching the medical students or other healthcare professionals. So that's the aspect of professionalism, and I'll give you a scenario for, uh, for, 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 uh, for this patient. But in terms of um, being professional, you are dealing with your patient. The patient has to trust you as a healthcare professional. The patient trusts us that whatever information they give to us can be confidential and being shared maybe on social media or the platform which is away from hospital setting. Uh, that's what uh, a professional way of doing things. Thank you very much, Dr. Mao. That was a very good example, and we have seen. Um, a lot of people may get in trouble because of doing that. Um, in your hospital, do you have any guidelines or anything to prepare a new nurse? Let's say a new doctor or a new nurse who is coming to work at your hospital. Do you have some guidelines to help them know their limitations, what things they can or cannot do regarding that scenario for my life? So, in our hospital, primary care, uh, I think the issue of when we get a new workforce or someone to be a 
Yes, has I been introduced? My name is uh, Mr. Ruchius Philbert. Yes, <laughs> Ruchius Philbert. Uh, I'm a registered, a registered, uh, registered uh, a nursing officer uh, who is uh, working at Imperial uh, National Hospital. And I'm also a researcher and currently a co investigator on NCD studies here at Dar es Salaam, uh, Tanzania. Now, uh, back, uh, back to the, the point of discussion, I just would like to, to thank the, the organizers uh, of this uh, conference where we are addressing the area of uh, culture uh, of suffering, uh, culture of suffering. Yes. Now, uh, speaking of the, of, the, of, the, of the professionalism, professionalism, uh, it means the, the act, the qualities, the qualities uh, that defines a, a professional person. The conduct or the qualities that define uh, a professional person. It, it's a calling. It's a calling uh, that uh, requires a specialized and a mastered knowledge. And on, on the end of the, of the professionalism, it encompasses uh, several attributes. There are attributes that define the professional as a care uh, provider. As a care provider. Okay. And one of, of those attributes include the specialized knowledge and master knowledge, the competence, a honest and integrity, accountability, self-regulation or self-determination, and it demonstrates strict moral codes. So there are several attributes that define the, the professional health care provider, that defines the, the, the standards, the professional standards of the health care provider. And uh, I would like to use one of the, of the scenario on that area of professionalism, and that scenario covers the, the three areas, professionalism, uh, accountability, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the professionalism, accountability, and the competence. Yes. Now, speaking of one of my scenario here, uh, a patient, uh, Mr. Hall, Mr. Hall, if you are prepared for scenario, a patient, Mr. Hall, uh, just had uh, a, CT, a CT scan of the, of the abdomen. And that CT scan uh, showed the, the large, uh, the, and that CT scan showed the, the large cancellous growth, the large cancellous growth that has metastasized to the, to the lymph nodes. 
când e pe, pe, pe nați de altul meu să stai tu de mic, să ne deriva. Deci, Mr. O has, a, has his son, who is a doctor. And that son then came uh, at the world to, to ask you for the, for the results of Mr. O, the result of the CT scan. Remember, the CT scan revealed the, the, large, the, the large metastasic, uh, the large meta, meta, metastasic uh, cancerous blow that he has resuscitated to the, to the lymph node and the abdomen. So the question is, will you tell the, his son about the results of that CT scan? <laughs> That's one of the, of the, of the, of the, of the questions. But also there is another question. If, the, you, if in case you tell the, the son the results, and then the, the, the son asks you the, that telling the patient the results, the patient may die. So, will you, do, will you going not, are you going not to tell the, the patient the results? To, will, you, will you abide to the wishes of his son of not telling the Mr. O the result? With the with the concept that the, the patient home is home, will it die? Do you get the, the scenario? Hello? You. Hello? You. My grandma's calling off. Is it me or is everybody here? It's just not for the new friend. Oh, okay. Does everybody hear you? Do you hear me? Uh, oh. Yes? A bit sad? A bit sad. Yeah, you know, the sun was so far away. Oh. <laughs> okay. Should I... Okay, now I'm repeating the, the scenario. So now that's much better, yeah? Yes, yes. Let me repeat the scenario uh, to make it clear to, to everyone. Yes. And that scenario poses some of the questions around the three areas. Professionalism, accountability, and the competence. Uh, Mr. O, a patient uh, called Mr. O, uh, just had a, a CT scan uh, of, the, of the abdomen. And that CT scan, the CT scan results revealed the presence of uh, a large uh, mass in the abdomen, the large cancerous growth in the abdomen that has metastasized uh, to the lymph nodes and the liver. Mr. O has his son, who is a doctor. Then his son came to the world to ask him for the CT scan result of his father. So the question is, would you tell his son the results of Mr. O, who is his father? And, and, what, and if the, the, his son Tell is you, if, 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 and if you tell the son the result, maybe, if you tell the son the, the result of his home, and the son talks to you that telling my father those results, my father may die, the question is, will you, will you, will you respect the son's wishes of not telling his father the results? <laughs> Do you get this? So, yes? Yes, so I'm going to, um, before we answer that your question, I'm going to ask you the question. Yes, yeah. So, right now, for example, do you have things in place to teach um, the nurses who, or the nurses who can share information and who should be allowed to receive? Do you have those guidelines right now in place? Uh, guidelines does? Ah, okay, okay, thank you. Um, for us here, you know, the hospital institution to which I'm, I'm working, uh, there are proceedings, there are procedures uh, that guides uh, the that guide us during our our clinical practice. And uh, apart from those, those available guidelines within our, our working areas, but there are also a continuous in job trainings 
uh, different trainings and services trainings that aim on creating the, 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 the awareness among maybe for the new staffs, even for those uh, seniors, on, the, on just to remind each other about the issues of maintaining professions and how to make a profession decision while ensuring that the decision we make is putting the patient at the center, putting the patient interest first uh, before before uh, 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 So there are continuous uh, professional training, there are continuous training for guiding the clinical practice and the clinical decision. There are always uh, kind of induction or trainings or pre-service trainings uh, before uh, starting with the, getting to the world for giving the healthcare service deliveries. And during those pre-service training, we discuss different areas around professionalism, including the codes, professional codes of conduct. And for nurses, we have our code of conduct that is guiding. The, the, the professional standard service that's guiding the health code decision making, but that is guiding also uh, how to, to change with the world is changing uh, environment to make sure that we are providing the, the services uh, that is, uh, that is uh, evidence based. But apart from those, from, from those trainings, uh, we also make sure that all the, 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 the staffs including the new staffs, are abiding to the guiding principles uh, of, of our clinical practice. There are several guiding principles, and, and including the, the respect for, for, the, for the humankind, obtaining consent uh, before providing care, maintaining professional competence, taking responsibility and being accountable, being trustful, collaborating with others and being part of the team, protecting confidential information. So there are around seven guiding principles of, uh, of, of nursing practices. So we make sure that the, the new workforce, the workforce or the healthcare team, they are aware, they are well conversant with all the guidance principles of, uh, of our clinical practice. And among of those things we are discussing today, including professionalism, including the competence accountability, are all the one of the components of guiding principles of our of our clinical practice here. So one of the means we use to make sure that we are all on the same page during the care delivery, we make sure that there are continuous uh, pre-service trainings, but there are continuous in-job training where people we do discuss the different scenarios, we do a share different ways to make sure that we make the professional decision 
that is keeping your patients at the center and making sure that we focus on the patient's uh, interest first and ensuring that the decision we make is keeping the safety uh, of the patient. Okay, yes. um, so I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fibbert, for sharing yes. that um, scenario and asking those uh, great questions. Yes. Um, Dr. Ma, are you still? Are you here, sir? Yes, so um, I have a good question for um, about professionalism. So you did mention about the, um, getting the um, I mean, social media because it's widely used and there's no denying it, whether you're regular or not. So, what happens, for example, if you're a nurse, um, as you said, um, give us a name with the uh, doctor, but then that's what that is said to share that information outside and disclose patient information without the consent of the patient. Um, what are the um, guidelines or what are the protocols that need to be followed after to protect or to? Then when it happens that the 
page or report of them, the first one is between the communication between the uh, nurse and the patient. And um, you can see the first one, it was a bad approach. Um, the nurse uh, is unprofessional and she has a mobile, and loud, and she is not there. And you can see the idea, you can see the patient, she noticed everything and she is not satisfied with the and uh, the next approach was better and we saw um, the nurse has been cared and she feels the, the nurse is there and uh, at the end you see she also asked the nurse, are you, are you being here for um, So by, by seeing that, when we are interacting with another with patients, we have to think like, uh, okay, one way, if I will be patient, how would I like to be, um, be helped? The other one, the teamwork. We have seen the, 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 the other one, she was busy going to break. Um, while the other one was working and she, she asked for help, but the point did, did want, did, didn't want to help. Well, she, she thought that was not her response, but the patient was not on her list. So that we can see the teamwork was not good. And the next one, we saw before the, 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 the nurse who was responsible, before she asked for the help, the colleague offered the help. So that should be, we work as a unit. Anything, we have to be flexible, we have to help each other and uh, we are we are there. That's why we're paid for. So we have to work together. That's it. Thank you very much, Ms. Nana. Um, and for your um, scenario and Dr. Anna Mushi's um, comments, um, so takeaway at least for me, one of the takeaways was um, working together. And so for Dr. Anna Mushi, it's like having a board round, having um, all the discipline to be able to come together and discuss that with the patient and have the same story so the patient knows what is happening. And for your uh, four scenarios there um, together, um, yes, being a team player is important. And if you can assess and see the other person is working, whether it's the doctor or the nurse, or if the doctor has too many patients, so then try to help them if you, you, know, if you don't have people coming to your as well. And for the nurses, again, if you see the other nurse is struggling with one side of the um, group of the patient, maybe they have a patient go with a head group. So just being humble and creating that culture of safety, because you're going to help that nurse today and tomorrow probably going to help you and when you have a heavier group. And of course, I'd say that the end, you benefit that patient. Um, because that's what we're trying to do for this uh, patient in creating a safe environment for us to work. And I'm still, there was a question from um, Chad from What was the question? Sorry, that was a question from the chat. The question from the chat that then now from the from Santa particular, but we have a question that can address from previous. Any anything with the um, professionalism, teamwork, or communication? Oh, yes. Um, okay. One of them. Uh, 
literally with policies. It doesn't really matter when the person joined it. As long as you know this, this package, you need to go through these, um, these guidelines, it's, it's part to read everything, including those guidelines on what to do in this situation. Um, I think that can help you to be able to introduce that. Instead of just brushing, brushing things off and saying, you know what, um, because you were late for the induction, um, then you are excused not to know these things. Um, they should start to be able to introduce those things. Okay, and uh, thank you again, Michelle. Um, I know Ms. Keisha is an educator for one of the undisclosed hospitals. If you can give us maybe a minute or so for usually with the routine uh, when a new person is coming, if you can walk us through that process. So then, then we know what information is given regardless of the time. Usually how do you, um, how many times in the year, for example, you do the orientation? Or what information do you put through the information? Just general terms. Um, so technically, when somebody comes as a new, in a new employee or graduate nurse or an employee of any department in general, they have to go through screening. Um, um, it's a building, you know, if you have any legal issues or if you have any um, general disease that like could be infectious to anybody else. So once you pass through that and then you come to us in our training and development. So we do train based on where you if you are specific a nurse, nurse, um, as a nurse in an acute care, so you have to go through all this training. And this is including the safety obligations, including communication, including uh, professionalism. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to do. You can spend probably two days just do training on a computer before you have even go touch anything on the phone. Um, you also have to go through skills competencies. You need to be capable and you need to be competent of um, identifying um, in a situation uh, such as if a uh, patient is unresponsive, uh, what do you do? You just don't call for help and just walk away. You need to be uh, competent to do CPR. You need to be competent to identify all those safety um, and risky situations. So in terms of education, we do have, uh, when you're going and utilize, you have to go and go through um, core measures uh, such as uh, stroke, MI, um, pneumonia, surgical infections, uh, uh, things like that. So you read information, you do some tests, and you're done. And then we have skills fair, where you do the same thing, and you do it twice a year, and you have to um, show your competences and how to perform these things. And this could be the daily stuff that you deal with, such as to start a V, or to change dressing, or to give medication, just to make sure that every nurse um, on the unit know what they're supposed to do. You may be a nurse for 20, 30 years and you've been doing um, the same thing for 20 years and they may be wrong, even though you have not killed anybody yet, but you have to stay up to date, you have to stay current with ongoing education, so we do that. And we follow every employee at least twice a year to make sure they're up to date with all the skills and the training they're supposed to have. We have policies as well, so we educate um, the nurses um, and all employees where to find these policies. So basically the policies are your guidelines. They are like your Bible. If you don't know how to deal with the situation, um, you pull that policy. As long as you follow that policy, it's you're fine. You don't follow what somebody else tells you to do, and that could be wrong. So, and of course, you cannot say so, so, so told me to do this. So you have to be confident and you have to be accountable. Of course, the supervisor will be involved, uh, the church nurses will be involved, and we also encourage the employers as well. Um, if when in doubt or when they feel like they're not uh, comfortable,